Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. This week we receive another one of our long-lasting patrons, Izanagi. He brought his Oloro Taxing combo deck. The is on Look Mew and Silence Curious Shark Bird. Bal brought Seek Robot Clamp Storm and late is on his Ukima Kazur build. Izanagi is the one starting and he kept two lands, a Swamp and a Scalding Tarn. Brainstorm can help on digging for lands and Demonic Tutor can help on the shuffle side as well as getting key cards for the current board state, or winning pieces. Render Silence is a versatile counterspell while Deluge is great board wipe. Hushbringer is especially good now versus dock sites all over the place. David kept a crazy explosive hand with two lands as well, planes and island, but accompanied with a mana crypt, Mox Opal with a Nerf Metalcraft alongside Sensei Divining Top and the Nizet Signet. And to top it all off, Mana Drain can protect his commanders or win cons. Bal kept a rather slow but full hand, with the planes and a scalding turn for lands, Memnite is mostly fodder for storming turns, while Dockside is one of some crucial combo pieces. Silence can protect his winning turn, and Enlightened Tutor can get the necessary equipment to win, while a Braid can deal with pesky oofs or other stacking pieces. Finally, Late kept another grinding hand, with the Breeding Pool, Bloodstained Mire, and Underground Sea for lands. Chain of Vapor is versatile removal, while Foresight can tutor for the creatures to cast with Food Chain. Destiny Spinner is great to output Food Chain, and Ghostly Pilfer is a nice card in this era of Breach decks. Ready for the match? For all that it's worth, Izanagi will gain 2 life on each of his upkeeps, and will keep track of it through the video interface, but won't narrate it. Izanagi starts his turn with a Scalding Tarn and passes. The Vid strangely asks us not to focus him just before playing an island, followed by a Sol Ring and then an EZ Signet. And when we think that's it, he plays Mox Opal and finishes with a Sensei's Divining Top and activating before passing. Mal simply plays a Scalding Tarn and casts a Memnite, shipping it too late. He plays a Bloodstained Mire and passes as well. On his end step, Mal cracks his Fetch for a Plateau. Izanagi plays a Swamp and cracks his Fetch and now late is afraid of a dark creature into an agent, but nevertheless cracks his fetch. With no agent from Izanagi, he gets an untapped watery grave, taking two. Izanagi gets an Owlet Fountain, taking two as well, and then casts his top deck, a Null Rod. Too much of David's dismay, he passes. David plays a Plains and casts another top deck, Dranith Magistrate. With two cards in hand and a bunch of useless rocks, he passes. Bal plays a Plains and casts a Stoneforge Mystic, he gets a Skull Clamp to his hand and attacks Late for one before passing. Late plays an Underground Sea and casts Foresight. He exiles Eternal Scourge, Miss Hollow Griffin and Manipulate Fate, as he won't need it. He passes and on Izanagi's upkeep he draws from the Foresight. Izanagi was unlucky to draw no lands, so he goes for the main phase Brainstorm. He finally found a land, Sunken Hollow. He passes to the Vid though. He plays a Command Tower, attacks Late and passes as well. Simple turns all over. Mal plays a Mana Confluence and for a second thinks on firing a Silence just to resolve Dranith Magistrate, but with an Umbraid in hand he decides to keep it for a winning turn, and fires a Dranith into David's open mana, who doesn't even blink before casting his Mana Drain. Mal sadly attacks late before passing. Late plays and cracks a Scalding Tarn for a Tropical Island. He plays a Ghostly Prilfer, hoping to draw one from David, and passes. Izanagi draws and instantly casts a Demonic Tutor for a Mystic Remora, which he casts hoping to get out of this landless hole he's in. David gets to his turn, casting Shabras with the help of Mana Drain's mana, and Late gets to draw one from Pilferer. He attacks Izanagi for one and passes. Bal draws and plays a Shatter Skull, the Hammer Pass, paying 3 life to come untapped, and then casts a Dockside Extortionist, hoping to deter David from dealing with Nullrod as well as trying to set up for a winning turn. He attacks Late and passes. Late plays an Untapped Breeding Pool and casts a Birds of Paradise. He then follows it with a Destiny Spinner, and attacks Izanagi with Pilferer before passing. Izanagi didn't get to draw from Remora, so he pays for it to stick. He plays an Hushbringer, and Bal is happy for his Dockside's timing. Izanagi passes to the Vid. In his draw step, Shabraz gets a counter and the Vid gains one life. He plays an Ancient Tomb and casts Narset, Parter of Veils, triggering Remora. He activates her, revealing Curiosity, and passes. On his end step, Bal activates Stoneforge to boost Skullclamp onto the battlefield. Bal simply draws and passes, since he only has one abraid but three pieces stopping him. Late plays a Sunken Ruins and activates Pilferer, discarding a Gitaxin Probe before attacking Narset for two, and Spinner attacks Izanagi. On his second main phase, he casts Rhystic Study, incapable of paying for Remora, and passes. 
Izanagi finally got some cards, so he lets Rimora sink. Unfortunately, he fails to draw another land, so he simply passes, discarding to hand size. David gains one life more from Shabras as he gets another counter. He casts a Magus of the Moon, not paying for Ristic. Bal floats one white and late responds with a Limdol's Vault. Not liking the top 5, he does it once again, losing one, and keeps those 5. As David wants to attack, Bal spends his white to cast an Enlightened Tutor, not paying for Ristic, since late can't draw more cards. He gets an Umizawa Jite to help on killing the creatures after Rod is gone. David then attacks late for 6 and passes. On his end step, Bal fires his abrade on Null Rod. However, Izanagi responds with a Force of Will, pitching a Chain of Vapor. With his plans foiled, Bal simply casts Jite, paying for the study, and passes without attacking, as he wants Late to be alive a little longer to help on stopping the vid. On his end step, Late casts a Chain of Vapor onto the Magus, unlocking all his colored mana. The feed decides not to copy, and Late instantly jumps to the red zone, swinging Pilferer at Narset and Spinner at Izanagi. On his second main phase, he casts a Time Twister, holding priority and casting a Hull Breacher. Note how hilariously he taps things to one side or the other, depending on which neuron on his brain is pulling stronger at that moment. Hull Breacher resolves, and despite Null Rod, this plan allows him to discard all of his opponent's hands. Although, in response to Time Twister, Izanagi actually hard casts an underplayed Force of Despair. Lee draws from the Ristic, but finds no answers, so Time Twister resolves. Shabras gets 7 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and David gains 7 life in the process. Late then plays and cracks a Marsh Flats for a Bayou before passing. Izanagi finally found some lands. He plays a Cephalid Colosseum and recasts Mystic Grimora, not paying for the study, and passes. David draws, gaining one more life and a little bit more fat on that Shark Bird. He casts Gamble, not paying for Grimora nor Ristic, and tutors for a Curiosity. He randomly discards a Mental Misstep. He plays and cracks a Scalding Tarn for a Volcanic Island and then casts Brawling, not paying the one. And late unfortunately forgets Pilfer's trigger. He follows it with a curiosity onto Brawlin, not paying for either taxing enchantments. He's setting up to win, but only has 5 cards in hand, although he casts a Mox Diamond, not paying the 5. Discarding a land would make him draw 3, up to 6 in hand, but just enough counters on Shabras to kill late, so late responds with a force of will pitching in Narset reversal. Remory triggers, and Izanagi responds to it with a vampiric tutor, not paying for Ristic. Despite these attempts at winning, he goes for an Ad Nauseum, since he already has some answers in hand. David then goes to attacks and swings Shabras at Paul, to have him in check and hoping to go at late when he has exact commander damage to finish him off. He passes to Baal. In his turn, he plays and cracks an Arid Mesa for a Plains. And after David's last turn, he feels like feeding Ristic and Remora a bunch so that David changes focus and maybe providing resources to the other players to battle a curious Brawlin, as well as his pet bird. He plays a Mox Opal, not paying the 5, follows it with a Paradise Mantle, not paying again. He then casts a Crookshank Cobalt, not paying for Ristic, and finishes the turn with a Relic Seeker, not paying again. Late starts his turn with a Snow Island and casts a Demonic Tutor, not paying for Remora. He gets a Food Chain, which he casts, and Counterable due to Destiny Spinner. He could go off now since he has removal for Draneth, but he'd rather pass, hoping the other players spend interaction on themselves first. In his end step, Izanagi fires a Mystical Tutor, not paying the one. He finds a Dark Ritual and then late discards to hand size. Izanagi lets the fish die, plays a Flooded Strand and discards to hand size before passing. Considering Null Rod is in play, the table feels more inclined to a Cyclonic Rift over an Ad Nauseum. With this in mind, after some pondering, Bal fires a Silence on David's upkeep, which makes it the last chance for Izanagi to Rift before David attacks and before late untaps. And if Izanagi is really holding on to the Rift, David is more inclined to attack Bal or Leite. He plays for a Ristic and Izanagi ends up responding with his Sorcerer Plushers onto Brawling, not paying the one. David gives Shabras Trample just in case. He draws, gaining one and growing Shabras, and plays a Mystic Rainforest before attacking late for 14 commander damage, only two more. He passes to Bal, who goes directly at combat, swinging Relic Seeker at Izanagi. He connects and gets renowned, tutoring for a Conqueror's Flail. He passes, and on his end step, late fires a Chain of Vapor on Dranith Magistrate. It resolves and David copies it, bouncing the food chain, hoping somehow Izanagi can deal with the spinner and then counter it. Late decides not to copy and then Izanagi casts a Dark Ritual, not paying for the study, and follows it with an actual Ad Nauseam, not paying again. However, Late responds with a Drown in the Lock and Drowned were our hopes as well. David cracks his Misty for a Tundra and it's Late's turn. He plays a Flooded Grove and casts an Imperial Seal for a Pact of Negation. He follows it with a Ponder, drawing the added protection and casts a Carpet of Flowers. 
goes to his second main phase, adding two green and with it he casts an uncounterable food chain. And since no one has further interaction, he demonstrates the loop where he casts one of his creatures from exile and exiles it to food chain, generating infinite mana with which he infinitely casts Ukima and he exiles it again to kill the table. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match everyone. Sultai keeps farming those wins and despite commander damage being relevant, late managed to pull on through. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons and especially Izanagi, Stefan, TG Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Heated Chill, Drunken Housecat, V, RJ, Starfall and Brandon Glazebrook, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!